Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about a challenge from the Hack the Box uh, Uni CTF. So this was a CTF that was only accessible for university students. Um, I uh, participated in this uh, CTF, I didn't really play it that much, but I solved a couple of challenges and today we'll be talking about a forensics challenge called Xfil. Now usually I don't really like forensics challenges, but this one was an exceptionally, exceptionally good one, I thought. It's a uh, it's not too hard, but it, it's definitely interesting. Um, and for this challenge, we have to get the idea of we are a blue team of an organization. We have been hacked, but we have a traffic capture of what the hacker did. And we want to know what did he extract from us. So let's take a look at this. We have uh, this file, this capture.pcap file is what we get. So what do we do with a capture file, uh, a pcap file? We open that in Wireshark. So in Wireshark, we see that we have a lot of requests. So these are 17,000 requests. That's a lot, but let's start looking into this. So for um, Wireshark files, I always like to just scroll around a bit, see what we're, what we're working with. And it seems to be HTTP, uh, TCP, and then some MySQL. So that's very interesting. And uh, we notice that uh, the HTTP requests are all between different addresses. But then the MySQL requests, they are between the same address. So maybe through this HTTP request, um, they're triggering, the attacker triggers the MySQL server to do something. So that might be the case. So let's dig deeper into this HTTP request. So we're going to follow the TCP stream here. That's going to show us this uh, nice view here where you can see, okay, the attacker got uh, from this local host, it got uh, the root page and that returned a page. So then we can go to the next stream, that's another HTTP stream, and they posted to slash API slash cache a gopher link that did something, and we get a, uh, the result here is a warning, something went wrong, okay? Then if we go to the next one, we notice th this is a MySQL stream, or this TCP stream has some MySQL in it, and we see that there seems to be a MySQL query executed here, which is gonna do a select, then a sleep, and the sleep is going to uh, sleep a certain amount of time, uh, and that certain uh, certain amount of time is going to be depending on this uh, group concat from the database name, uh, which is going to they're going to take a substring of it, a substring of one character, uh, the first character actually, and um, yeah, that's the time that we're going to sleep. So okay, the attacker maybe somehow uh, got. Uh, an SQL injection, and this SQL injection is blind, it's uh, time-based, and let's see if we can find that in the other request. So if we go back one stream, uh, that's up, let's go back one stream, then we see, okay, there's no real time difference here, okay. Let's go back all the way, and let's see if there's any time differences here, because, well, this query would wait a certain amount of seconds, so if we find that there's a difference in time here, then we have some extra information about what this attacker might have done. So let's go scroll here and we see, okay, there's a sudden jump in three seconds, which is interesting because that's not something you expect for all of these requests. There was no real time difference. And then we have this sudden jump of almost exactly three seconds. So that's very, very peculiar. If we keep on scrolling, we see another jump of exactly three seconds. And another one down here, probably somewhere. Yeah, another one here. So we have a lot of these weird odd jumps in three seconds. Okay, that's very interesting. Now l let's take a look at what this uh, SQL query does again. So let's follow one of these streams. So, okay, it's gonna take, let's uh, copy this, put this in a document real quick here. Let's put this right here. So what is gonna happen here? We're gonna do a sleep of a character, like I said, so we can remove all of this for now. We just know this is gonna be a, a this as well. This is going to be just a character. We can remove this sleep here. And we see, okay, for this character, we're going to shift it to the right for seven bytes. We're going to then uh, bitwise and with one, and then do times three. So, so far we looked in the time differences, and it seemed that there were only time jumps of, of three. So maybe this probably results in a either a one or a zero due to this and of one. Um, but then we have this bitwise shift 
that's obviously now all we know is okay we have a one or a zero so we cannot really get the character from that but let's keep on looking in these requests and if we go up a couple of streams uh, we see that right here it shifted oh that's interesting let's okay right here it shifted uh, by four and if you go to the next one it shifts by three then if you go to the next one, it shifts by 2, and so on. And what, where does it end? Well, it ends at 0 here, I guess. Because then if you go to the next one, uh, we're back up to, well, it's supposed to be 8, but my water shark is doing something strange. But it now sh uh, shifted to do the second character instead of the first one. So this uh, was a 1 at first. So it's gonna. it seems that it's going to loop through every character of our query and gonna go for this n and this n is gonna be uh, from 8 to 0. So then what th does that mean? Well for every character we have 8 results here and maybe those are uniquely identifiable. So how can we uh, attack this? Well we c for every character there is we could calculate what that mapping is gonna be. For example uh, this is just an example, this is not what it's actually going to be, but for example, for a T, it could be 03003003. So then, if we look through the data, and we uh, ca and we search for all those time differences, and we find this exact time difference, uh, the sequence of time differences, then we know, okay, that was a T. So if we do that for every character, then we can find out, uh, we, can, we can go back and search, hey, did that occur? Okay, that's that character. So I wrote a script to do that. So that's the first part here, the generate mappings. It's gonna loop over every printable character. And it's then gonna loop from zero to, uh, to from seven to zero. This is, uh, this is wrong, this needs to be seven because we start at seven. Uh, and then it's gonna calculate what that is supposed to be and add that uh, to this array. And then at, at what we can do in the end is we can search through these mappings for arrays that we see in our data. We can say, okay, these match, so that must be that letter. And that's what this get letter function is. It's just going to look through the mappings to see if this array uh, occurred in it and then return that letter. Okay. So then we have our main uh, function here, which is going to do the, the bulk of the, of the uh, searching through the data and, and checking uh, the, these letters. But obviously, how are we going to take this data? Because this data is in a Wireshark file here. And, oh, it's hard to get it out of here. Well, it's not because Wireshark has something called T-Shark, and T-Shark is an amazing tool that we can use a binary for dumping and, and analyzing network traffic. So we can use T-Shark, and uh, we are going to use T-Shark to get this data out. But obviously, if we just take all of these lines, it's going to be very difficult uh, because there's a lot of them, there's a lot of difference in them. So maybe we can sort them all by which ones are MySQL. And then we see that uh, we have these time jumps that we can see clearly. And they seem to always happen after uh, the OK response has happened. So after the OK response, it's going to actually do the waiting. And then for the next request, there's going to be the difference or no difference if there's no difference. All right, so then let's get all of these MySQL uh, responses out of the out of the PCAP into a data file. So for that, we're going to use T-Shark. So we're going to do T-Shark. We're then going to do dash capital Y, and then that's what what kind of uh, traffic we want. So that's MySQL in this case. And then we can do dash R for our PCAP file. So that's capture.pcap, and then we can output that to data. Okay. So then let's do a head of our data to see if that worked fine. And that seems to have worked perfectly. So now we have all these different columns that we can use to work with. Okay, so let's get back to our script here. So our script is first gonna generate the mappings that I talked about earlier. It's then gonna op open our data file and loop through every line. Then if, an, if a line ends in response, so that's that line right after, let's uh, show that here right after where the data would have changed in seconds. So you can see the line where it ends in response. That's where the time changed, okay? So from there, we're gonna set the previous time to the old new time. We're gonna get the first row from that line and that's gonna be our new time. And that's this field here. It's gonna be our new time. 
we store that as a float. Uh, and then we calculate the difference, we round that up, so then we know the difference, which is in this case either going to be 0 or 3. Okay, we append that to this times array. And then once that array is of length 8, because remember um, for every character it's going to have 8 MySQL requests, once the times array has that length, we're, we're going to run the get letter function which is going to go through our mappings that we generated earlier and it's going to search for which letter corresponds with that specific uh, array that we passed it. And it's then going to also print the results so we can see what happens. Okay, let's print that out and see what happens. So we can see it starts off with seemingly a database. Then it seems like this might be a table name, a column, uh, some more columns, a password field, admin, so that might be like the username and then the password might be the flag. Uh, but this is the flag for this challenge. Now why did it output all of these things? Well, let's take a look in our data here. So if you look at this stream, it's going to select the database name first. Then if we like uh, skip to 180, here it's searching for the table name. And if we skip further, we will probably find more stuff. So here it's uh, still doing the table name. Let's skip to 480. Here it's doing the columns indeed from that. And let's skip to 880. And here it is doing the password from this uh, database that we have and then from the users table, I guess. So that is how we got, how this attacker attacked this company or this place and uh, well, got the flag and we kind of reversed what the attacker did through his uh, the traffic capture that we got. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Video. I hope this was interesting to you. If you have any more questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I would love to respond to them. I hope to see you guys for the next video and take care. Goodbye.